السلام علیکم خواتین حضرات میرا نام سمر حسن ہے اور میں فاؤنڈر ہوں اپفنی کی جیسا کہ آپ جانتے ہیں اپفنی ایک ایسا ادارہ ہے جو کہ سوشل آنٹرپرینرز اور کریٹو آنٹرپرینرز کی مدد کرتا ہے ان کو کیٹلائز کرنے کے لیے ایکسیلریشن پروگرامس ہوتے ہیں ٹریننگ پروگرامس ہوتے ہیں بزنس کنسلٹنگ سروسز ہم آفر کرتے ہیں اور ہم بہت جو امپورٹنٹ ایک پارٹ کرتے ہیں دیٹ از کمیونٹی بلڈنگ اور کمیونٹی بلڈنگ ہم کیوں کرتے ہیں بیکاز ناٹ اونلی آنٹرپرینرز لیکن بہت سارے ہماری جو پاپولیشن ہے وہ ینگ ہے انڈر دی ایج آف تھرٹی ہے and everybody needs guidance in their lives right so i I'm, i'm i've crossed 30 uh, i'm closing you know i'm nearing 40 years of age but i still feel ke mentoring har kisi ko chahiye hoti hai guidance har kisi ko chahiye hoti hai at every step of their journey so um, hum community building mein bahut sare events karte hain jisme se ek impacting lives hai so just to remind everybody ke impacting lives hum kyun karte hain and what was the reason behind it humne kyun ye pichle saal start kiya so um, it's actually inspired by a quote uh, from rumi with life as short as a half taken breath don't plant anything but love and essentially it is about something which i feel very passionately about i think ke zindagi mein hame koi aisi cheez karni chahiye jiski positive legacy ho jisse hum insano ki madad kare jisse hum koi positive impact create kare chahe environment pe ho chahe i mean environment pe hoga to logon pe automatically hoga so essentially the idea behind impacting lives is to speak to people and talk to them about why and how they have dedicated their lives to serving humanity what giving back to society means to them and how they actually embarked upon their beautiful journeys jab unko failures or setbacks hote hain to kaise wo uske sath cope karte hain aur kya link hai generosity ka prosperity aur happiness ke sath so aaj um, aur jaise ki aapko ye bhi pata hai ki impacting lives jo hai wo um, kisi bhi guest ke sath ho sakta hai it's not restricted only to pakistanis so today i'm very excited because mere sath ek aisi khatoon maujood hai um, vladimira mesko i don't know how to pronounce her last name i'm hoping it's briestenska um jo ke uh, bahut saalon se systemic change ko tackle karne ki koshish kar rahi hai inequalities or inclusion کو ٹیکل کرتی ہیں اور ایک وینچر بلڈر انہوں نے فارم کیا ہے پاکستان کے اندر نیم ایکسپوننشیل کے نام سے تو اس کے بارے میں ہم بات کریں گے یہ اسپیسیفکلی آنٹرپرینرس کے لیے بڑا یوزفل ہوگا اور دوسرا ایک ان کا بہت ہی انٹرسٹنگ یو نو آرگنائزیشن ہے کولڈ دا فیوچر فارم وچ از ڈیڈیکیٹڈ ٹو ہیلدیئر آنٹرپرینرشپ سو وٹ از دیٹ مین آنٹرپرینرز بہت سارے کٹھن لمحات سے بھی گزرتے تو ان کے لیے ایک سپورٹ اسٹرکچر انہوں نے کریٹ کیا اور پھر اس کے علاوہ وہ ایک نیکڈ پوڈ کاسٹ بھی ہوسٹ کرتی ہیں جس جس کے بارے میں پبلک ڈسکشنز یہاں پہ ہوتی ہیں اباؤٹ فزیکل اموشنل اور مینٹل ہیلتھ آنٹرپرینرس کی اور لیڈرس کی سو وداؤٹ مچ اے ڈو آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو انوائٹ ہر ٹو دا ورچوئل اسٹیج اینڈ سوری فار ایوری بڈی بٹ موسٹ آف دا کانورسیشن ول بی ان انگلش کیونکہ یو نو آبویسلی مائی اسپیکر انگلش ول بی دا ایزیئر لینگویج فار ہر آل رائٹ ہائی دیر Hello, Samar. Hi there. Thank you for having me. It's a great no, Thank great. you so much for being here. I'm super excited to be interviewing <laughs> I you. I loved your introduction. So you do understand Urdu? No, I, I loved your room quotes. Ah, well, uh-huh. so there are a few things. I loved the roomy quotes, uh, first of all. Um, and then I laughed because um, I was able to grasp a little bit. So Urdu is very um, sort of gentle to us uh, foreigners because you guys keep mixing a little bit of English in there. So you at least give us a sense. But yes. uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully, hopefully uh, my aspiration is to also deep dive a little bit into the beautiful language. So maybe next time in a few years time, we'll be able to record in your native language as well. Absolutely. We'll try. We'll try, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So tell Absolutely. us a little bit more about yourself, Lajvira. Um, thank you. So um, I come originally from Slovakia, which is a... very small country, mountainous. Um, the, the beauty we have is the kindness of the people and the nature. Uh, here in Pakistan, people laugh because when I say that we are 5 million, they ask me usually, oh, that's like a one Pakistani wedding. So that's sort of the metaphor <laughs> that I'm running on these days. Um, so it's like located in the central, it's sort of, um, there is a central point in Europe. So that's if you, if you see Europe in the middle of it, there is this small nation, Slavic nation. Um, that's where my roots come from. I come from a very small town, 14,000 people. So really, really one, one community, one family. Um, I have left uh, the country 
around my teenage years because I was aspiring for better quality education. So it led me out of the country. Um, my journey allowed me already then to um, really experience different cultures within Europe, first of all. So I sort of fluctuated between Czech Republic, Denmark, Venice in Italy, which if you guys have ever chance to go, it is a, a little fairy tale surreal place, certainly surreal for studying. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'm, I landed in the, in the space at the beginning of sort of my professional life path. Um, I thought I, I will go towards diplomacy and foreign relations. And I really sort of navigated the path in terms of doing everything possible in design to, to sort of uh, find my place there. And, and I succeeded. So I, um, from the sort of outside perspective, so I spent um, solid time in uh, working within European Union, which is really the core body for managing Europe, but also within Slovak diplomacy. But um, at some point, in on that journey quite early on after a few years i started asking myself the important questions i believe so which are around what really motivated me to go into this field and doing on a daily basis what i have been doing which was a lot working with for, uh, policy makers um meeting really from prime ministers to european union commissioners diplomats etc um and I realized, Samar, that the motivation for me was not really truly authentic. So I realized that it wasn't driven from the place of the core strengths and really what, how am I wired and, and sort of the value system. It was a lot driven from the fact that I felt that foreign policy will give me exposure one yes to the what's happening on the global scene which was very important for me and it sort of uh attracted me but there was also this this element around um and i'm looking for the right word whether it's i don't think it's fame of anything but there was some glamour to it when you are part of the circle there is some glamour mm -hmm. and i realized that that there was also the, the sort of the confirmation, self-validation. Mm -hmm. And when I was able to put a finger on it, I realized that, oh, that, that's not how I want to sort of live my daily life. That, that's not what I want my motivation to be. Mm -hmm. um, so I started digging much deeper and I realized that actually the things that I was able to connect to and um, that were important for me were a lot in the human rights sphere. Um, mm -hmm. So when I decided to sort of leave that bubble of foreign policy and diplomacy, I actually navigated towards um, a master's degree in human rights and democratization. Uh, and then it led me on a pretty exciting journey. Um, Samar, are you there? Just checking in. I am. Are here. you there? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I because I saw my screen, so just just to be sure. So yeah, so it led me towards human rights, and then uh, issue, and um, I went deeply into women's rights. Happy to talk about it a little deeper um, because it was very very interesting and, and a great learning journey for me. Um, and then again, there were few sort of curves on the journey which led me towards innovation and entrepreneurship and that 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 is a huge huge chapter for me which i'm grateful for um and happy to deep dive into how entrepreneurship and social impact led me also to pakistan well that would be wonderful right so uh, so there are so many common strains right um so i studied international relations I, I oh. ended up going to Geneva and ended up studying international relations. And that was essentially because my dad was posted as a, posted as a diplomat, even okay. though he's a scientist. Um, mm -hmm. But for that particular stint, he was posted as, uh, you know, minister. Well, he wasn't a minister. What was his title? He was a diplomat in any case. So every mm -hmm. single weekend we had to have, uh, you know, foreigners over and so on and so forth. And I thought that foreign policy was what I wanted to do. And I wanted to join the foreign affairs office. So I studied right. IR. And then I came back and even thought about doing my CSS exams, which you need to take. But at the end of the day, I think I just ended up working for an educational foundation where I every single day AI was learning. B, the impact 
um, that the university is creating, it, it's going to be for life, right? So, and I, and I was part of the founding team. So I think it's very interesting that we may study one thing, but actually our journey may, you know, our aspirations or our value system may lead us to do something which is completely different. So it's, yeah. it's, it's very interesting that you mentioned that. But yeah. look, I'd love to, um, you know, more, learn more about each segment of what you were doing. And especially, mm -hmm. you know, maybe if you want to go chronological order, that's perfectly okay. But definitely, you know, highlight your work at the Future Farm and then the Naked Podcast and then Neem Exponential now and tell us everything. Okay. okay. But I have to react to what you said, Samara. And thank you for sort of sharing with me a little bit about your own journey. Because so my parents and my family, or oh, they're all engineers. And I've been good at math and physics and, and, and all of that sort of the precondition for being able to go towards also the science. And I enjoyed it, but I was, my inner self was wired much more towards humanity, social sciences, even art. Um, I played piano and exposed myself to theater, etc. But it was always sort of seen as that's, that's good, but that's the hobby. So yeah. <laughs> my, my choice, thinking human, um, actually ERR, well, the inter international relations, which I studied, and journalism, was actually already rebelling against going for the for the tech field, which my 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 family and close environment thought that that's the um, one choice, the clear choice. So I think. I just wanted to sort of highlight this, how important I believe. And now when I talk to, you know, sort of young people who are making those choices, um, my sort of one takeaway or reflection is that um, if you can try to really dig deeper into yourself in terms of what are the things that really you care about, make you flow, interest you, rather than like, look a little bit on what motivates you to do the choice applying for one field or the other. And then the other thing that I wish I would do more, to be honest, Samar, is that I wish I would talk to people mm. uh, who already are in those professions that I was sort of thinking that I was motivated to, to become the people, the roles, the profession I was motivated to become, because they can tell you how they live their daily life, how it Absolutely. is, how it feels. So pilot, pivot, test, experiment, and try to sort of, you know, if possible, um, mm -hmm. minimize the external expectation and pressures as the motives for the decisions. You know, so I think absolutely agreed, 100, 100%, right? And for me, the trajectory was to become a doctor. So I've said okay. this before on my different sessions as well, because, mm -hmm. you know, we I come from that generation where, you know, pursuing medicine was low, was really, really important. Um, and mm -hmm. it's usually the parents who were driving it. So all the way up till A-levels, I was pursuing medicine. And it was only through a fluke, by the way, because my dad suddenly got posted to Geneva and we're two sisters. And he said, oh, no, 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 I'm not going to leave one of my one half of my family behind, right? That she has to stay at a hostel and become a doctor. No, no, we're all going to travel together. So actually, that's what happened. Otherwise, I would probably be a doctor not doing this, right? Yeah. Because how much time do doctors have? There are courses, indeed, that, that de define and design our journey. And I know that, you know, a lot of times we feel that we don't have that control or that freedom to make those choices. But I do truly believe that the choice we have is for that inner work, the in, inner reflection, asking the, the big questions, right? Uh, so yeah, if you are guys listening to this and that I would want one thing, even whatever I'm going to say forward, this one thing really I try to always sort of share because I wish I would have asked myself more those questions and look for more mentors already at that age. Mm -hmm. um, but you asked about the sort of the journey. So um, Naked Future Farm, Neem Exponentials, they're all for me sort of platforms to how I am trying to contribute really to creating a, I, I mean, as vague it can say, uh, better livelihood for the wider society at large i so currently we are talking i am in islamabad where are you samar yourself right now in pakistan also in islamabad um so yes so oh sorry my my mic was muted so i'm also in islamabad your, I, I read actually from your lips so i <laughs> Um, so yes, yeah, so I don't see actually how I look at myself um, just for context is I don't look at myself as a 
white a European Slovak woman in Pakistan. I look at my as a global citizen myself, global citizen um, who had the honor really to be become and 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 learning to become part of this wider society. Uh, and and Pakistan is a beautiful country with a, a really kind and and. Um, hungry people hungry for uh for for learning and inspiration and motivation so for me it's a really humbling experience um but uh maybe to touch base on this um working within contexts like pakistan um which we sort of you know tag as as emerging markets um have been always um important for me and I, I thought that's a place where I thrive and when I can add hopefully some value. And the reason being is that um, I have spent solid time working in markets like London, um, uh, some some uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem in US like New York, Silicon Valley. Um, and I realized that um, over there, yes, the progress is happening, the innovation is very fast. But I felt, to be honest, on a, on a personal level, is that um, very often the talent that is that is there and the people are also, and I'm going to be quite harsh here, are also a little spoiled in terms of the support that is available to them. Mm -hmm. And whenever I traveled, um, so spent some time in, in Kenya, in Ghana, in Africa, which was my sort of first exposure to emerging markets. And, and I was just amazed by the um by the hunger of the local talent for mentorship for support and i felt that there the potential is so huge the needs that those entrepreneurs were addressing were so profound that i felt that those are the places that if i can add some value and work with the local support groups and local mentors and local groups, uh, mm -hmm. and I can sort of become and blend one of them. Um, that's the place where I feel a strong belonging and, and um, a place that, again, I hope I can create some value. So the, play, the, the way to Pakistan was really serendipity because um, my current co-founder, Nadeem Sheikh, uh, he was called in to um, help drive Jess Cash, the mobile mm -hmm. financial financial services that probably you guys all know. Um, and he called me in um, because, so for, for many years, um, what I'm doing with entrepreneurs, I support entrepreneurs from the <clears throat> one psychology space. So I'm working a lot with individual entrepreneurs and mm -hmm. founders around their founder psychology and their well-being. So understanding what motivates them, understanding um, their support system, how they energized, what are their key stressors, how it impacts them, what is the sort of healthy way for, for them to navigate the challenging times. So that's sort of one bucket of the work that I'm doing for the founders and the wider teams. But then second is that um, I'm trying to help organizations and teams to also understand what it takes to grow their businesses from a more of a human capital and organizational perspective which is and you know like we say this right when investors invest they say oh the talent the organization is one of the key factors of success absolutely for it's always about the team right and that's one of yeah. the biggest biggest uh, problem areas for entrepreneurs. How are they supposed to form the teams? How they're supposed to search for the right co-founders, um, delegating mm -hmm. tasks, managing morale of the entire team. You know, yeah, I think Indeed. it's, uh, it's a very important area. So, so, and thank you for saying that because uh, it is very much the truth and we look for it, but however, there's very little support for it. If you look on the support system that is around us, whether, um, you know, it was back in Bratislava in Central Europe, where I was part of ecosystem, even in London, US, and now I see it here in Pakistan as well. A lot of the support to work for entrepreneurs goes into areas of the business building. So we go where the, the human part, the human capital does not really really belong or it's sort of like priority we're low priority and and so we support them on um, go to market strategies marketing fundraising business development etc etc you name it but the human capital comes very low on the priority list and again it is one of the key factors for success i've seen it life 
Um, we have statistics, so we have the evidence. So what I'm trying to do again, and also look for partners in this ecosystem who are putting that effort and that sort of focus on it, is to bring this topic quite high on a priority list to to give it some some um, attention. Um, but also it goes beyond i think the team dynamics and uh, and and sort of helping to find the right co-founders it also touches things um such as how is the organization structured how the team communicates are they using digital tools to communicate together and relate um do they have um we call them circles they're a lot of time known as town halls how does the team comes together and align around one vision one north star um it touches a lot around how our decision um decision made in the company is it all hierarchical or are different people from different from different layers of organization involved right so it uh, touches a little bit the governance so we call it sort of operating system uh, and that's what I'm trying to do here in Pakistan through Neem Exponential, mm -hmm. which uh, I can tell uh, maybe a one sentence about, which we call ourselves a venture builder. So Neem Exponential, the, even the name, um, we spend some time thinking about it. So it comes from the South Asian, you, you're nodding. Um, of course, the Neem tree. <laughs> exactly, which I loved. Although you, uh, I must say this because a lot of people laugh when when we introduce ourselves because my two co-founders are called Naeem and Nadim. So yes. people <laughs> think that the name came from an allegation of their name and they left me somewhere on the on the journey. But the truth is it comes from the prosperity and wellness of the tree. And um, what we are trying to do is uh, we go beyond give, sort of providing and serving through the financial capital. So mm -hmm. we are not a traditional venture capital. We are not a VC. We are a venture builder. So we identify opportunities in companies that have a path towards growth. To, to, they, they are blooming. Mm -hmm. However, they need a deeper support across all different areas, mm -hmm. thinking around the strategy, thinking uh, meaningfully about fundraising, the organization, the team. Um, we are helping them to really think about the scale. So we, at the moment, we are working with number, I think we have about 10 companies that we work currently with. Mm -hmm. So the group is very intimate. We don't grow into uh, tens or hundreds. We work very deeply with those founders, nearly becoming co-founders to them. Mm -hmm. So... That's and I think that's very important, what is required right now in Pakistan. So a lot of the work that we do, it's there is so much synergy, I can't even tell you how much synergy there is between what Epiphany is trying to do and what you guys are doing. Yeah. Um, because I think, so maybe we don't have our own funds yet. That's the, that's the angle which we haven't touched yet, but everything yeah. else, right? So I think a yeah. lot of times people don't realize that entrepreneurs need moral support. They need places where they can feel space, uh, they can feel safe to share actually what they're going through. Right? Because all the Absolutely. time there's that act for the world, fake it till you make it, you're pretending to do much better. You're not sharing with people because the perception matters a lot as well. Um, but you need that safe community where you can just be yourself and be open about the challenges that you're facing so that people can offer support and strategies and help. Um, yes. And I think that's really, really important what you're trying to do. So what yes. I, I've, I do have a few follow-up questions because I know our audience is going to be very interested, um, especially considering there, are, there is financial support available. What is your typical ticket size? And when you say that you're looking, you know, you have a small close-knit group, are there certain verticals that you're looking mm -hmm. at? Mm -hmm. So kind of those two questions mm -hmm. are very important. And then the third one is what stage? Um, if they're pre-revenue, can they still come to you or does it have to be post-revenue? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, uh, one by one. So we don't invest at, the, at this uh, on, on on this day. What we do is when we identify the opportunity and the team, and I can t speak a little bit about it. How we how we look out there to the market. Um, we come really as a come in as a co-founder, and we we provide that sweat, that support, which is around working together, shoulder mm -hmm. to shoulder. We do help finding uh and and um really tapping into the meaningful and i'm really cautious about saying that the the smart capital so the mm -hmm. one that goes beyond the financial value so mm -hmm. we are educating our founders a lot around what is it to look for when they go out there for investment which goes very much beyond 
look for the money for the ticket. It comes with that whole support and the value system that needs to be aligned and somebody who is able to open doors for you, et cetera, et cetera. So we, our capital is around the execution, around the strategy, around the network. And yes, the capital, financial capital, but in collaboration, in partnership with others that go mm -hmm. also beyond the Pakistani investment ecosystem. So a lot of our companies are currently fundraising and we are helping them to connect to the global investor scene, but again, also to the sort of meaningful local investment um, individuals, whether it's angels or VCs. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of uh the answer to the question so there is there is no ticket at this point in time but we can identify the right ticket and, and bring it on the table so that's mm -hmm. that's there um in terms of our focus so we have it in our vision statement as well so it is to bring financial wellness to every pakistani so financial wellness what it means it goes beyond what we've been uh, sort of thought for many years which is financial inclusion and financial inclusion has been many times understood as providing a bank account to people and the mm. bank account is supposed to solve their financial needs. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't, right? And no. we've learned this. And I remember when we, it was probably, I think now it's like four years ago when we were in, at the conference in Ghana and we, we were on the stage and we, and it was the financial inclusion forum. And, and already then we challenged the concept and we said, it needs to go beyond. We need to be able to integrate the, financial services as an enabler into already existing life cycle of, of people. So just an example, uh, one of our companies is in agriculture. Um, you might actually know them, I, I'll call them out. It's called Baha Burkassan. They're working with six, about six absolutely million yes. farmers mm -hmm. across Pakistan, 60 million, which is, um, I mean, it's amazing. The, the, mm -hmm. and still growing right there is a they have a north star for a much bigger growth what they're doing is that their primary um service is advisory services to farmers um mm -hmm. through mobile phones however when we came in as neem exponential we help them understand that the farmer at the end will equally he can he or she can be empowered by being able to take a loan a small loan mm -hmm. to buy better seeds uh to expand their business um equally the farmer will be enabled by being able to ensure their crops against the bad weather so as this is and this is sort of integrating financial services into the life cycle of the farmer so that's what we mean by financial wellness it is addressing the uh not only the financial needs of the farmer but their emotional social physical needs because at the end of the day it will positively impact the livelihood of the farmer of the family of the community and we're hoping for the pakistan at large so that's sort of, of what we look for yeah. so in so, terms of the companies yes please go go no, go, no, go. No, go ahead go ahead go, uh, complete your thought yes that the companies and the verticals right so we say financial wellness which is sort of the horizontal layer and we look for companies across different verticals whether it's agriculture we have a company in education ed tech space mm -hmm. um we have a company in tourism wellness we have a um actually we do have a financial services play which is a payment solution for and an um ability to take loans empowering smes kriana stores in pakistan mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um through loans providing loans um so different you can really think wide in terms of the sectors hospitality and they all have a financial services embedded in their services and solutions so that's sort of what frames our thesis is the financial wellness concept okay i think that is very useful and i think that's uh, really important for all the entrepreneurs who are listening that Neem Exponential exists. If you're looking for support to build your venture, then that's, you know, they can come to you and seek your support. And really through the steps, you'll be guiding them, whatever they need, you'll you'll be providing that along yes. the way. So yes. look, I'm going to come back to a couple of questions that I meant to ask you, right? So one of them is, is very simple and it is about, you know, whether you think you can actually make money and be financially well yourself while serving humanity. And what do you think about that? Me as Vladimira. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, you know, it is 
So yes. I'll tell you the background to the question okay. because there's a lot okay. of question when people are becoming social entrepreneurs or trying to do humanitarian work, they're always mm -hmm. questioned by their peers mm -hmm. and what society considers as success. Mm -hmm. um, so financial success, do you think that can happen while you're trying to help and serve humanity? Yes. And thank you for the question. I think the relationship, what is our relationship to money? It's one of the very important questions. And, and you are very right uh, that as uh, entrepreneurs, and I'm going to challenge this. I wish that the social entrepreneur as a, as a phrase, as a, as a term will not exist, that we will live the days will it won't exist because I truly deeply believe that every entrepreneur should have a social, Im creating social impact. So Deliberately. So, yes. It, it is integrated within it. Mm -hmm. There should not be entrepreneurs and social entrepreneurs. I always ask myself, like, what does that mean about the entrepreneurs? Does that mean that they are doing this only for the creation of financial value? And then there is a group of special individuals, enlightened, the noble, that they create this for social impact. And yes, you are right. In a lot of, you know, in our society, well, collectively, a lot of times we look at these groups of people as, oh, that's the noble thing to do. And they don't create the financial value. So, you know, asking the question, what's the relationship with money and, and being, being well, right? And for me, answering the question, what does it mean? What is my own well-being? And the fin finances is an enabler, 100%, it's part of that. I needed to answer that question for myself. What is that level that creates that well-being for me, right? So clarity, having clarity for that uh, was very important. Um, I also try to do this through my ventures that I'm part of. And currently it's Neem Exponential and the Future Farm. I'm trying to do this in a sustainable way. So yes, one of the motives or one of the drivers for us is to also create financial value, create money so that we can pay ourselves and I can actually support my own livelihood, living and well-being. So it is in integrated in the model of those ventures. Um, there was a time, so uh, this does not mean that I don't believe in the... Um, in the power and strengths of, let's say, establishing and driving change through nonprofit organizations or charities. I truly believe they have a very important place in the wider ecosystem and landscape of driving a change. But I think every leader and driver with, behind the business organization needs to have this question answered because some are, it all starts from ourselves from the self-care so you know i always laugh because you know our transport industry has taught us this very early on when you get on a plane airplane and you sit and they tell you in the instructions that Absolutely. If so, in, in, in mm -hmm. the emergency, put yes. the oxygen mask first only then and then help with your children your or other people absolutely yeah. 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 which which goes against nature right because you think like oh my god i'm not gonna let my kid to be you know at risk and take care of myself but they know why they are saying it because you cannot amplify your help your contributions unless you are taking care of yourself right unless you are in and a i think that is so important I, I think that's it's it's really, really important that you're mentioning this. And this is, you know, so I started off as a social entrepreneur first and thought, oh, this is I left my job and I said, oh, I want to be doing this and so on and so forth. And now every other person who's trying to put, of course, purpose first. Right. So that's the difference, essentially. But people who are trying to do that, I always tell them, OK, what's your business model? Let's think about your business model from day one. Yeah. Otherwise, you won't be able to sustain your business at the end of the day, right? And, and I yourself. think that's really, and yourself, yeah. of course, because at the end of the day, what what are you going to do if you want to help other people? At the end of the day, that requires resources, human resources, financial resources, material resources, all sorts of resources. And, you know, money needs to be there at the back end. But I, I do want to, yes, it's an enabler and it can take you a little bit further. In, in your in whatever you're trying to do as well. Um, my follow up question to that is about you again. So how do you define success? Mm. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I do ask myself the question often in different 
in, in different phases of life, in different chapters of life. And, and, and I realized that um, there are sort of two answers, two parts of the answer to this for me. Um, one starts from what we just talked about, that for me, the success also means that I am in a place that I feel well, that I feel that I am able to contribute, that I am tapping into the strengths and, and places of myself that are simply driving who Vladimir is, that I am doing things that are connected to my value system, um, and then that I'm taking care of myself. So the I plays a big role in my answer. Um, the other half of the of the of the answer for me is that ability to to give to contribute to serve so in you know there are different forms to it right um and again i said it today i'm trying to do it through neem exponential and the future farm but also beyond i mean in just in a daily life in you know my how i treat my relationships whether it's with my family and with my friends and wider community so being able to show up authentically and that having that as an enabler for me to help and serve simply simple as that i mean it's vague but that sort of drives me and has been always driving me and you know what it also allows me to be quite flexible in the ways i do that mm -hmm. so that open space and and the vagueness of or, or or this north star for me to be quite broad but still very clear really so the well-being part and authenticity that allows me then to contribute and 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 being quite generous generous to myself in identifying the ways i do that yeah i think that that will make me you know at the end of the day reflect back and be like mm -hmm. yeah the journey and and you know it, it all sort of worth it I think, again, another thing that you're mentioning, right? So at the end of the day, I think the best part about being an entrepreneur or doing your own work is that you get to choose what you want to do. Oh, and that's yeah. why we pursued entrepreneurship. And sometimes, you know, because of, again, there is so much pressure, I feel, on entrepreneurs as well to do extremely well, to quickly, you know, iterate and move forward and just be creating success really, really fast. And maybe the industry that you're in, you have to compare yourself to other um, you know, enterprises in that industry rather than comparing yourself. Suppose it's a tech enabled, I don't know, you know, ride hailing service. Yes. Um, that's very different from a training company, for instance, that may not, may or may not be really using technology because perhaps yes. the communities that it's serving don't use technology. So I'm just saying that, you know, it's, there's so much pressure. And at the end of the day, sometimes we lose sight of why we started doing this in the first place. And I think, again, it goes back to what you were saying earlier on about knowing yourself and about having these honest conversations with yourself. And the other pressure that I feel a lot of times entrepreneurs face is, oh, if they give up, it's going to be a failure. Whereas it's not because everybody has different paths and different you know, milestones that are happening in their journey. And if you feel again that, okay, this is something that you wanted to do, but right now you feel that you have to park it for some time or you want to you know, just stop it and pursue, uh, pursue a job or just stay at home. I don't know, <laughs> whatever you feel like yeah. doing. It's your yeah. life at the end of the day. So I think there's so much pressure culturally, societally that we feel and we've forgotten to be kind to ourselves. And we've forgotten, I think, about this. What makes you happy? So I'm yeah. going to ask you as, again, you know, just to offer your reflections. And these are difficult questions, I know. Um, but you know, so I love the questions. They're the questions yeah. that I wish we would be asking ourselves more often. Absolutely. Yeah. So what makes you happy? Um being able to be in presence. So as you know, as a um, big question, this is uh, maybe I'll start from a big answer and then maybe land on something very concrete. But um, I was just thinking when you ask me, the first answer that popped into my mind is that even this conversation really. So the fact that being in the presence and 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 the I, I'm really sort of grateful for um, the privilege of um, having a, ability to choose so the freedom of choice that I, I i have but i also sort of um design for and fight for um so that makes me very much happy because it allows me then um 
to design my, you know, day design where I put my energy, where I put my focus, the people I surround myself with. Um, so, yeah, I think the, the the ability to be in the present moment, um, enjoy it um, to, to its best, um, that gives me a lot of joy. Um, on a maybe more, in a more sort of uh, straightforward way, um, I do really do love um, spending time with um, people who are like-minded or, but it doesn't mean that we need to be sort of thinking in the same way, but people who are aligned or who I'm aligned in terms of the value system and their um, sort of look on life and, and, and um, how they're driving change that really uh, gives me a lot of joys and it gives me a lot of motivation and inspiration for every day. Um, and these are individuals really across age groups, and, I mean, nationalities, uh, different backgrounds. I always found it really, really enriching. I love spending time in, in nature. So that's sort of my uh, place where I go to recalibrate the energies and balance uh love animals have a i'm a, I'm a proud dog owner uh, although i don't see her very often because i travel uh coming back to europe she's in europe um but again i would maybe come back to the fact that i i am able to currently do what i'm doing really gives me a lot of joy i mean the entrepreneurship has been um a, a true gift um as how i show up to the world and 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 to it every day really so hopefully that's not too vague for for the listeners but um, well yeah. you know so I, so i'm going to be a little selfish as well okay it's not only about the listeners it's also about me <laughs> <laughs> yes so this so is I, I like that. i like asking the questions topic. that that matter to me yeah. i think at the end of the day as well but i think yes absolutely these questions are very important so next one is again something that you may not have thought about before but really what do you think, you know, how will people remember you when you're gone? So that could be, you know, if you can answer that or else you can just rephrase it and say, and think about how would you want people to remember you? Even that can work. Mm. As a good friend, as somebody who was there for them in the hard moment, not just the fun and, and joy, um, I would probably start from there. Um, um, somebody that they could, rely on that was there for them that was the first thing that came to my mind and if there will be um beyond this if there will be a little bit around that she really tried to break some of the stigma some of the stereotypes to allow herself and then hopefully few more others around her um to find their touch their authentic self and show up to the world um with what really drives them who they truly are and tap into that potential that would make me very proud but um i think really if it, if it stays around being a friend who is there in the in the in the heart as well as the good and somebody people could rely on and trust i think that's that's really it um yeah, I think that really matters to me a lot. And now, as I said it, you made me think that I need to now call you. The <laughs> I know. So I, like, I was just thinking, oh, my God, there are all these people that no. I need to speak to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're still relationship because, indeed, I think at the end of the day that, that that's what really matters, right? That connection, and which um, also reminds us that it is much beyond us as individuals. So... Um, yeah, I, I, I do try to remind myself often and sometimes I fall into this trap of uh, being self-centering and self-focused and, you know, all demons come up and shadows that drive our some of our behaviors and motives. So I try to remind myself that, um, you know, the connection and, and even conversation like this makes me sort of get out of that box and be like, yeah, you know, I'm just this one small particle of this huge universe so Absolutely. connect yes. to it connect to it hmm. so final question for our audience um uh, what life three life lessons would you like to yeah. share okay um i think the the first one would be uh just reflecting on how we started our conversation um which is around try to 
try to uh, ask yourself the the tough questions they often seem as tough questions the big questions around who you are uh what motivates you why are you making decisions in the ways that you are making um what drives you what energizes you um starting from that inner work um will be really enabling and empowering and it just will give you the opportunity to do decisions that will feel right and that will also give you sense of belonging and yeah i would say do the work do the hard work because often again we we are as you samar you said it yourself we are driven by so many external pressures whether it's family friends uh peer groups media all of it it's a long list it's a long list so try to dig deeper into yourself and 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 create that place as a as a starting point for showing up to the world um and i'm happy to help so if if uh, anybody is out there curious what are some of the right questions do reach out i have a a good good bunch of resources or i have to share some are with you and then we can share with the listeners um i think the second one again um for me at least is related again to the self and the reason why i'm saying that is that i really truly believe that that's the empowering place for anything else to happen um and that self is that invest into the well-being into the self-care um <clears throat> we we and as an entrepreneur we set ourselves not on for for a short run but this is a marathon and if we deprioritize ourselves from day one because we are in a survival mode and everything else comes first we won't get to the place we want to get so my we won't get my, to the finishing line no yeah. way i've really i've seen it and you can have the best motives um but it's just it's just not sustainable you it's it's not possible so prioritize your own well-being and it is the the good sleep the good nutrition the good support system the self working on having you know a proper time to again having a space for just be with you be your be, be with uh vladi with vladi samar with samar right create that space all of that um so, so prioritize the well-being and the third lesson hmm i would say invest into relationships mm -hmm. you know give give it a big priority because again at the end of the day it comes to what we said we are not alone in this neem exponential of lati or future farm it, it it again it is just a one small particle in this wider collective in this village in this movement so invest into relationship get get to know people go beyond the superficial try to get to know people be curious um nurture them take the time call up not just to family and and close friends but also your wider community connect um because that's also if the hardship hits that's one of the safe spaces where we can go and if we have invested into it and we are continuously really meaningfully investing into a relationship those are the mechanisms that will support us though so that this is what we can lean back into so yeah i would say it's a lot about the self the inner work the self care and investing into into meaningful relationships well, thank you so much vladimir i think this was really useful i think it's very sound advice for the ones who want to implement it and i think some of the wisdom comes the older you grow the more mature oh, that you are oh yes this is what i'm also aware of <laughs> You know, so I mean, I do think that wisdom comes with age and you know experience, and I think relationships, focusing on those things that matter at the end of the day. And I think COVID, in a way, was a huge. You know, it was very beneficial also in in certain ways because you realize that less is more, and you don't need a lot, um, and you could focus on things that are really important in your life. Perhaps you were just ignoring them, right? So I think this is yeah. really really helpful. and thank you very very much for making time and for sharing such beautiful thoughts so it was lovely interacting with you thank you thank you samar thank you samar i mean it was a great pleasure and i really mean it and so thank you for having me again um it makes me 
it, it, selfishly, it does make me feel to belong to this wider collective around Pakistan, but beyond in the, in the entrepreneurial, you know, uh, movement. And thank you for all the work that you are driving with Epiphany and also yourself as a leader. It's a, I'm a proud, you know, sort of a sisterhood womanhood because we need more of that. So um, it's been a great pleasure and I enjoyed the hour or so of conversation and uh, looking forward to the next one. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right. So for our audience, that was Vladimira again. Um, and I hope that you listened in. If you didn't get a chance to listen to the life lessons that she shared right at the end, try and listen to as much as possible. Um, I will try to extract certain key points for people who find it easier to absorb information just by reading. Um, so thank you very much for listening. And this is Summer signing out. <laughs>